Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Unit 6 Physics Lab for um, light, uh, reflection, refraction. Uh, we'll look at total internal reflection of light and the dispersion of light uh, in today's uh, lab session. Uh, you know, light, uh, by now you know that uh, light behaves as a wave, so there's a wave property of light. You did, you studied the whole electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, in that electromagnetic spectrum, light falls in somewhere in the middle, uh, the visible section of the you know, electromagnetic spectrum. On the left, it goes towards the radio waves. Uh, and on the far right, uh, the gamma rays and X rays, and these is spe this is spectrum varies by you know the wavelength and the frequency. Smaller wavelength, high frequency, high in high energy side of the spectrum, and longer wavelength uh, and smaller frequency is the low energy side of the spectrum, um, and visible lies you know somewhere in between and we'll look into and even within the visible light uh, there is <clears throat> uh, so if you look at the spectrum it's the wave model so light behaves like a wave uh, uh, and at the same time uh, light also behaves like the particle so there's a particle theory of light and the wave theory of light uh, this person, you know, was more explores a little bit about the wave uh, theory of light. We'll look at the end today. Uh, we're not going to look at the particle theory of light, uh, but the ray model of the light. Uh, you know, any light source, uh, from any light source, the light radial lines emanate outward. And you know we consider those uh, radial lines as the you know ray model of light as straight lines, or you know if uh, those uh, those ray those rays can also be considered parallel if the source is much farther out. For example, sun rays you know at the Earth's surface we can consider them as the parallel lines, uh, while you know the these light rays emanating from the sun are more like uh, diverging outward at some angle. And so today we'll look into uh, shortly in the so in the reflection side of the light uh, when we consider ray models and there's something called specular reflection uh, or the reflection from the smooth surface. Uh, it came from the Greek word, uh, which means mirror. Uh, <clears throat> and in in this uh, part, you know, we can observe that any parallel light rays, like this one over here, when they are incident at some angle to a uh, plane here, uh, these parallel light, uh, light rays reflect back following certain law called the law of reflection here theta i is equal to theta r meaning the angle of incidence of the light ray on the mirror is equal to angle of reflection uh, here more detailed diagram is shown with single light ray uh, and uh, you know this is the incident ray the ray that emanates from a light source we call that the incident ray and that incident ray when it hits the reflecting surface um, <clears throat> if this is you know very a good reflecting surface then most of the light uh, like the best of the best reflecting surface like very good mirrors can reflect up to 98 99 percent of the light and that reflected line light ray is called the reflected ray obviously and uh, you know you can draw a normal line here uh, perpendicular to the surface of the mirror and with respect to that normal line the angle between the incident ray and the normal is called the angle of incidence and that is called the angle of 
reflection in the law of reflection it states that for every reflection you know the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection uh, you know when we are considering the incident ray and the same incident ray being reflected about the normal line and next is the refraction uh, before that we need to understand what the index of refraction is uh, ref uh, you know before that I said you know for a very good reflecting surface the incident ray you know ref almost reflects all of it right however you know depending on the material some of these incident ray can be observed by the material if itself and some gets transmitted you know through the material outward and during that transmission process, you know, within the thickness of that material, the, the light ray gets refracted uh, within the material. And we're trying to um, uh, understand what that refraction is. And before that, let's look at the index of refraction. <clears throat> and this comes from the fact that light... Uh, uh, even though it's the fastest moving thing in the universe, uh, it slows down somewhat when traveling through any medium, like when light ray goes from air to water or glass or any other material, even diamond, it slows down. And uh, uh, due to that property, you know, we define this uh, term, the index of refraction, uh, as the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum which is constant speed of light in vacuum which is also the maximum speed anything can travel and that uh, uh, value is given as c so small letter c means speed of light in vacuum and that is equal to uh, one over epsilon naught square root of epsilon naught times mu naught and these are uh, two constants that we have studied in the past this is electric constant that's magnetic constant and uh, mm, permittivity of free space and permeability of free space uh, uh, and not represents in vacuum and we uh, you see epsilon naught is a constant mu naught is a constant and uh, the two constants here one over square root of these two constant gives another constant number and that is the speed of an electromagnetic wave in vacuum uh, you studied or um, you are studying uh, electromagnetic waves uh, uh, this uh, this week in the theory class if you basically if you solve the four Maxwell equations uh, you know you get to this uh, expression here or the speed of a EM wave and uh, if you take the ratio of this speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in any other medium uh, then that ratio is called the index of refraction and that is denoted by n and hence n is equal to c which is again the speed of light is in vacuum which is that number it's a constant uh, divided by a variable uh, because light light speed varies in different medium hence v is a variable and since um, this is uh, this c is always bigger than v your n is always greater or equal to one uh, hence index of refraction in vacuum would be n equals to one because c divided by c and any other speed uh, would give n value bigger than one and so hence here are the uh, list of all the materials uh, with their own refractive index uh, vacuum is one air at a standard temperature and pressure is 1.0003 uh, so you know we consider with some uncertainty now we can consider the refractive index of air as one uh, very close numbers for water 1.33 we'll usually study water glass and maybe some other material but mostly water and glass uh, uh, 
weight about ground glass about 1.52 um, refractive index and so with that let's go to refraction so what is refraction uh -huh. when light strikes on a surface either it can reflect it can be absorbed it can transmit through and in that transmission process through the material when the light or an incident ray you know um, crosses the interference between the two medium the this one is air medium let's say with refractive index one and the refractive index n2 for the other medium uh, then you know the light bends uh, light bends as it goes from mm, one medium to the other medium and that property is called the refraction of light here same terms um, uh, you know incident ray uh, some may be reflected so we'll still keep the reflected ray here in this you know reflection part the law of reflection is still holds that is you know this theta uh, incidence angle is equal to reflected angle and for the refracted ray that ray over here you know it bends towards the normal and forms angle theta 2 which is the angle of refraction and uh, and this uh, uh, this this statement uh, tells here that when the incident ray uh, goes from thinner medium, this is air, thinner medium to thicker medium, let's say water or glass, that incident ray bends towards the normal. And when this refracted ray leaves, you know, the bottom here, it it's going from thicker medium to thinner medium. So you can draw a normal line here, and in that case, the refracted ray bends away from the normal. And you know, uh, the uh, there is a relationship between the uh, the uh, n um, n n one n two and the angle here, angle of incidence and angle of refraction, called the Snell's law, and which tells that n one sine theta one is equal to n2 sine theta 2 that's the refraction part and now let's move on to the uh, total internal reflection um, so what total internal reflection is you know for a light going from a thicker medium to let's say thinner medium uh, we're putting our source here in the thicker medium so this is our light source and uh, the the light source you know emanates these light rays in all directions we're looking at specific four light rays uh, at different angle to the surface so there's four one two three four light rays one striking the surface at location i at some angle theta small angle theta one as you see the angle the light rays which is the incident ray here reaches the surface and uh, and the light incident ray going from thicker medium to thinner medium outside we're considering a thin medium so the light ray going from thick medium to thin medium bends away from the uh, normal which is shown here in the diagram as as you increase the incident angle here theta 1 or theta 2 so this is this theta one is bigger than this theta here and hence that light ray still bends away with more angle with bigger angle with respect to the normal and if you keep increasing this incident angle you know there comes a point which we call that theta critical in when it reaches that certain value of angle of incidence the incident ray here refracts along the surface making 90 degree with the normal here okay and and any angle bigger than the theta critical now any angle if you increase that incident ray the angle of that incident ray slightly bigger than theta critical then that incident ray does not refract at all it reflects onto its own medium and this property is called the total internal 
reflection. And this happens, uh, this, this property is used in our uh, uh, optical fibers. Uh, these days, uh, the television signal and internet signals are sent using this, uh, this property of the light. So the information are carried by the photons, the light particles, through the optical fiber cables via, uh, you know, by means of this internal, uh, total internal reflection. And in this, this in reflection, you know, very less uh, uh, amount of light is observed is is or lost in the reflection compared to mirror reflection. You know, in mirror reflection, it's not 100% reflected, maybe 98, 99% for best of the mirrors, but optical fibers can reflect up to 99.9%. .9%. So less absorption or less refraction of the information or the light photon means uh, um, the lesser loss of the data and the faster transmission. And here is a simple math here. Again, this is from Snell's law, n1 sine theta 1 equal to n2 sine theta 2. And this is specific case when theta is equal to theta critical. Then we can write n2 times sine of 90 degrees here. And uh, uh, what else? Uh, so you replace sine 90 is 1. And hence we can calculate theta critical as sine inverse of ratio of two refractive indexes of two mediums. And uh, and here for if theta is bigger, greater than theta c, there no light reflected, all light is reflected onto the medium itself. Uh, and we'll look at the lab, uh, short lab today on this uh, based on this property of light. The next is the visible spectrum uh, and the dispersion of light. Uh, so in, you know, two, there are two main property of the visible light that is one is the color and one is the brightness or the intensity. Uh, the color of the light is more related to wavelengths and frequency of the light. So we're looking into more of a you know, wave property of the light. And this is your visible spectrum of light um, on the left hand side. So it, this is, it's in the decreasing. If you go to the right, it's in the decreasing energy. Uh, the blue lights have the highest energy or the shortest wavelength. You go further to the left, you go to ultraviolet uh, and X-rays and gamma rays. Uh, on the right hand side you go to radio and infrared the weaker lights and uh, so here color um, represent the color is equivalent to the wavelength so you see on the top the 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer so actually 750s nanometer this is the range of a you know visible light um, and what else? Uh, usually the you know white light, the sunlight consists of this visible spectrum, but we don't see it uh, by our naked eye and simple way. Uh, by simple way, we can uh, extract these uh, different colors by passing a white light through a prism. So prism, this is a glass material and you know the uh, light bends as it enters the a different medium here glass and how much it bends depend on the wavelength of the light or the interaction of the light in the uh, uh, you know molecules of the prism here and as it happens the red here in this the high wavelength or the less energy uh, photons interact less with the medium and hence they bend less and and the the blue region of the visible spectrum bends more and you see the blue uh, blue lights uh, you know, uh, collect, gets collected towards the bottom. 
and if you put a symbol screen here we see this rainbow color uh, from you know, violet blue to red and that's how you know rainbows are uh, created in the atmosphere in the atmosphere or, or in the air and uh, rainbows are usually seen when it's you know the when it's you know there's mist in the air during a rainy day and that's because you know these water droplets are required to form the rainbows these the sunlights the light from the sunlights get dispersed in these water droplets and that dispersion here you can see in the prism it's the similar principle and that dispersion creates the colorful rainbow and that spreading of the light into full spectrum that this is spectrum here uh, of varying wavelength from blue to red is called the dispersion and today's lab will uh, cover all these uh, uh, physical properties of physical phenomena uh, due to light you know, light as a ray model and light as a wave so we'll look into reflection refraction uh, the total internal reflection and the dispersion of light uh, for more theory uh, you can always refer to any physics books uh, let's look at the simulations now so this is the lab work, uh, lab manual for today's lab. Uh, complete your information on the top. Always type in blue. Uh, here are some five pre-lab questions, practice questions before you start the lab. Uh, read through the theory section here. Um, also, if it's if you feel it's incomplete, uh, read the book chapters on reflection, refraction. Uh, here in the theory section I've also included the reflection of light in a convex and concave mirrors uh, there is one short question in the pre-lab uh, and the critical angle theory uh, for procedure uh, I think this is this is the easiest lab out of all uh, physics lab that we have covered this semester uh, procedure wise so as usual you know go to the uh, lab site the simulation site uh, you can either download and run the Java which I don't recommend here you can run a peer uh, this uh, cheer PJ uh, runs the Java virtually so you can work on the browser itself uh, and so click to intro and you're here in this simulation page uh, you can explore this site yourself this one this turns on you know it's sending waves uh, to study the wave models uh, wave model of light uh, today we're doing the ray model so we click on the ray you can move this is just a laser pointer you can move around the laser like this here here uh, you can bring your uh, ruler uh, try to align your ruler right at the scent at the point where the incidence ray falls on the medium here so that you get the accurate angle and so and you align your zero degrees with the vertical you always measure your incident ray angle with respect to the normal and so now you know you know what what is your incidence angle uh, so once you set your protractor uh, you can also set the medium different mediums uh, the, this is the incident medium on the top as air or you can set it as water or some mystery object uh, and at same thing at the bottom uh, the air water or glass whatever it is yeah if you select glass it automatically automatically picks the refractive index for you uh, <clears throat> and here it shows both of the rays you know the the light rays going from air air to glass thinner medium to thicker medium so the 
the ray refracts towards the normal uh, you know we can ignore this reflected part for now some of it is reflected back uh, and uh, to explore the questions um, uh, here you have to fill up a table uh, it's asking you to pick your angle uh, uh, pick your various angles um, for starting at 30 degrees uh, or you can you know change the angle yourself and measure the refra refracted angle and calculate the uh, refractive index of uh, the material is it the material uh, air to the glass for the exit material yes and calculate the uh, mm, refractive index of the glass so you know pick pick your angle 30 degrees once and here you can see the refracted angle here so measure from normal to the refracted angle and get this uh, angle as theta 2 as you change the incidence angle you see the refracted angle increases and so pick any five values between 0 and 90 and uh, you know for air you know n1 you use measure theta 2 from the experiment calculate sine theta 1 theta 2 and use the Snell's law to calculate the uh, refractive index of the glass and uh, see you know how much difference you get from the you know average value of 1.5 okay uh, next uh, uh, the second one is you are you need to find the uh, refractive index of a mystery object okay uh, or you have to find what what that mystery object is so for part B, uh, set your uh, mystery A, uh, set your refractive material to mystery A uh, here that you don't know its refractive index. Uh, we are using the incident medium as air. And the question asks you to start at 30 degrees and you can go up to 70 degrees here, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So as you in increase the incidence angle, your refracted angle increases. Write down those refracted angles here as theta 2. Then get your sine theta, sine theta 1, sine theta 2 values. Complete the table and uh, plot a graph. And please make sure you make a professional graph using uh, uh, Excel. Uh, and uh, do the linear fit and the, that fitting at y equal to mx plus c and see what slopes give you what the slope of the angle slope of that line give you write down what that slope represents and from there you can extract the uh, n n value the refractive index of that uh, um, uh, of that unknown material uh, and that's what this equation this uh, question is about what does the slope represents and uh, from the slope you can extract the certain value of n compare that n to given uh, medium here and there is refractive index whichever value come closer to the given values then that unknown material would be one of these in the list okay and uh, you can also calculate the percent error um, you know let's say it's olive oil and you got 1.47 instead of 1.48 oh, it's very close to vegetable oil so i hope you won't get your answer very close conflicting like this one over here or you know maybe instead of 1.47 you get one point four seven nine nine and you know you can compare that to one point four eight and calculate the percentage error okay and here is there are two analysis questions what would happen if you change 
the medium you know to conduct this experiment under water versus air how would the angle change you know uh, in which medium would the light bend more towards the light uh, sorry more towards the normal uh, here if you go back to this slide here this should tell you how refractive index depend depend on the speed of light or how speed speed of light in the medium v light depends on n you can rewrite this equation your v light is c divided by n so for larger n your velocity of the light in the medium decreases and uh, um, yeah, and that's the what happens to the angle. So something that uh, here uh, we ex I explored earlier. You don't, you cannot see here. But if I were to change that to water and change the second medium to air, and as you can see here, uh, here all the light, the light, the light gets refracted some light is reflecting but as i increase the incident angle there comes a point right there you know slightly bigger than this here then there is no refracted light all of the light gets right at that point you see all of the light uh, is reflected within the same medium something the property called the total internal reflection it is not if the light has not refracted at all and so to explore that part uh, uh, complete the questions here or the setup here and you're asked to you know uh, change the top material to water glass and mystery a uh, and with you know refractive index whatever values are given um, within the uh, chart here and you have just found the uh, refractive index of the material so that will be constant throughout so use this total internal reflection part you know by changing various objects uh, and from air to you know you have to change the material here to different objects and uh, calculate that uh, 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 refractive sorry calculate that uh, critical angle you know where it, uh, it uh, uh, at what angle does uh, the uh, refracted ray becomes 90 degree with the normal and that's a critical angle here and again when when going from more more to a less dense medium so the mystery a to air is the less dense medium and as you see here that's a mystery object that we just did and this is my critical angle right there right so this is my critical angle when my refracted angle becomes 90 degrees and any angle more than 90 critical angle uh, at any angle more than the critical angle the light is all reflected within the same medium and that's what you're asked to explore find the you know theta c or the critical angle and here are two questions what effect does increasing the index of refraction have on critical angle so what happens when you increase the index of refraction? Okay, so this this data trend should show because you will have a varying refractive uh, index here, actually increasing refractive index. And based on that, you can compare if your critical angle is increasing or decreasing. And in the theory section, we have calculated the critical angle formula. Okay. So we uh, ah one more one final uh, uh, section is the spectrum. Uh, for this, uh, 
you can pick the go to this site and let's pick prism uh, here are different shapes get a prism out here you can change your uh, source light source and right now I'm doing that so here the environment is air water glass let's pick the uh, the nighttime mode and here it's easy to see the dispersion of the light uh, I can rotate that or that so as you see white light enters the prism and as it separates the as it disperses the light based on different waves uh, you can you can see the rainbow colors uh, coming out and that's what you're asked to explain up here and also explain the wavelength dependence on the color uh, here you can go to more tools and you know do the same experiment or different ones you can pick the different colors here and uh, uh, and you know most important thing you see here is how the wavelength is changing for different colors so color uh, color depends on mostly on the wavelength uh, so what color uh, has what wavelength uh, complete the chart here and um, so describe the relationship between color and wavelength how they are dependent you can refer to the theory uh, in the introduction section or if it's not enough uh, refer to the book um, looking at the spectrum produced by the prism which color is bent more and explain why also include the uh, uh, screenshot of your work in the previous one you know here Uh, maybe it's more visible in the in the prism sec in the prism section here. So look at here and you know explain which color is bent more and which color is bent less, and their dependence on the wavelength and the uh, refractive index.